Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. Lock and load. It's time to load up on some intellectual ammunition with Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. It doesn't matter if you learn to shoot with Daniel Boone or you're brand new. You're welcome here. This is the original national talk show about guns. And Tom Gresham is your guide through the maze of ballistics and politics. So grab your phone and call in right now. 866-825-5486. Or just dial 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. This week on Gun Talk, a mother with her Pennsylvania carry permit drives into New Jersey, and now she faces five years in prison. We'll tell you what the media conveniently left out. Plus, why the media is losing on gun rights from the author of a provocative new book. Plus, your range reports. Call now, 866-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Oh, man, do we ever have a full slate for you today. You do not want to miss even a minute of gun talk, all three hours. You, I tell you what, you want to hear the whole thing. And if you happen to miss any of it, of course, you can go grab the whole show. We upload it for you. You can download it at your convenience. Guntalk.com slash listen. We'll get you there. iTunes, a lot of other ways to get there. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm Tom Gresham. I'm your host today on Gun Talk. In fact, I've been your host for, well, almost 20 years. We're closing in on the big two zero, having a bunch of fun. And they said it would never last. <laughs> and still have a run out of things to talk about. People go, well, what? how can he possibly talk about guns for for three hours? What do you mean, only three hours? Oh, my gosh. We talk about guns a lot more than that. And, and shooting and rifles and calibers and scopes and technique and certainly politics. We'll talk a little bit about... It's just about time, if you haven't thought about it, if you haven't really looked at your calendar, it's time to think about... Hunting season's coming up. Going to get a new gun? Want to do something to your old gun? Want to just get better with it? We could talk about all of that. I'll talk a little bit about rifle calibers. Also, we'll have a first-hand report from somebody who had his epiphany, went to a gunfighting school and went, Oh, Tom, now I get it. This is what you've been talking about all this time. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have a range report there. But also, we're always looking for your range reports. All you got to do is give us a holler, 866-825-5486. Much easier, of course. Just dial one, and then Tom Talk Gun will get you in here. I am sure by now, you have seen the reports, you've heard the reports, of the mother from Pennsylvania has a carry permit. She drives into New Jersey, gets a traffic stop. Thinks that she's okay, thinks that her permit from Pennsylvania is good in New Jersey, and tells the officer, by the way, I'm I'm carrying a gun, I have my permit. And then it quickly went down, down, downhill from there, and she is facing some life-changing, terrible consequences as a result of that. Joining me to talk about that right now is the guru of gun laws in the state of New Jersey, Evan Knappen, is a friend of ours. He, uh, he, he's he got the inside story. Hello, Evan. How you doing, man? Hey. Hi, Tom. Yeah, great to be on. And it is an amazing story because Shanine's story uh, is uh, so dramatic in what's happening to her that it's become quite an eye-opener for a lot of folks. And it's actually helping... I think, to get some positive change. We don't want to martyr Shanine, and she wants, you know, we're trying to fight for her, but she's actually right. glad that what she's going through at least may have the ability to really help others because okay, she me, is let, just in a t- tough, tough situation. She is. Her name is Shanine Allen. She is a, a mother of two, for, and lives in uh, Philadelphia, has a carry permit, uh, she and she. You might explain why she got her carry permit. She's actually yeah, me, a victim. She actually lives not just in Philly. For those who are familiar with Philadelphia, she lives in South Philly. Okay, right. <laughs> the difference. And, uh, and she was robbed twice, and she she has two uh, y- y- young boys that are just lovely, wonderful kids, and she's uh, got no prior criminal record whatsoever. Works as a medical tech, just trying to be a good mom and take care of her kids. And after being robbed twice and living in South Philly, she uh, went and did the right thing and got a license from the city of Philadelphia via Pennsylvania state law uh, Mm -hmm. to get a license to carry. 
and she got her official license to carry. Had just purchased her handgun. It was a Bursa uh, 380 from a dealer who also sold her the ammunition. She went through the NICS check, of course, and bought everything legally and lawfully. And not being a total gun person, if you will, or, or new to it, you know, mm-hmm. but someone who understands the need for wanting to protect themselves, and everybody's got to start at some point, you know. Sure. She thought, the way so many others do, that here you have a state issued by the city, state issued permit to carry, that of course that would be recognized the same way as a driver's license. I mean, any rational person who got that carry license knows they didn't have to do anywhere near what you had to do to get the uh, uh, driver's, driver's license. Li- I mean, yeah, you don't get a background check on a driver's license. You don't get fingerprinted on a driver's license. You know, you don't get any. You know, there, it's such scrutiny applied to those sure. that would get a gun license that you would think, you know, and gee, a driver's license, why wouldn't that be? You know, you just logic, you know, so reason So what, what happened when she got to New Jersey? Well, she was pulled over for a very minor traffic violation, failure to maintain lane. There was nothing uh, earth-shattering, you know, simple minor traffic violation. She was on her way setting up a surprise birthday party for uh, her son in Atlantic City. She got pulled over. She immediately gave her driver's license and her carry license, as she was told to do, to the officer so that they know that she had told him that she had her handgun with her so that the officer doesn't get surprised or scared Mm -hmm. seeing a gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, upon doing that, she was arrested and charged with possession of a handgun without a New Jersey carry license and possession of hollow point ammunition, which in New Jersey has its own separate uh, category of weird exemptions. Hollow point ammo is legal in New Jersey, but only within narrow exemptions. At your home, it's legal, and you can buy it from a gun dealer. But if you're outside of that, you know, and since Jersey's so ridiculous over its carry licensing, Mm -hmm. but the fact is, uh, you know, your listeners know, because you've educated them, that hollow point ammunition is low penetration self-defense ammo. I mean, that's what it's about. It's it's actually the safest ammo you can carry. It's actually the safest. So, you know, just because New Jersey is all screwed up on how it treats it, and that's it. She got it from the dealer. Well, the problem is, in New Jersey, the handgun possession law, she's just charged with violations, simple unlawful possession, Mm -hmm. that offense carries a minimum mandatory, no chance of parole, three and a half years in state's prison, up to 10 years on the whole sentence. So we, last time we were in court, we had what's called plea cutoff, and that's when the prosecutor is supposed to give the best deal that they're ever going to give in the case. And if you don't accept their best deal, you go to trial. Their best deal was five years in state's prison with a minimum mandatory three and a half years, no chance of parole for someone who made just an honest mistake, who thought there was reciprocity when there wasn't, doing no crime, there's no extenuating circumstance, there's no aggravating circumstance. I mean, people hear this and they go, there has to be something more. Hey, Evan, well, there's, there's, there's it nothing sounds more to me, than New let, Jersey being insane with their gun laws. Now, it sounds to me like somebody somewhere has decided to, quote-unquote, send a message, but they're doing it on the backs of this mm-hmm. single mother mm-hmm. who has two beautiful children, and they're going to throw her in the state penitentiary as as what? A, a message? What, what's the, yeah, message? Well, the message? The message is apparently emanating from the prosecutor's office because his predecessor and every other prosecutor in the state is willing to take someone with this type of mitigating circumstances that are overwhelming mitigation Mm -hmm. and utilize a diversionary program called pretrial intervention where as long as you don't get in trouble again and do a period of probation, the charges are dismissed, your life isn't ruined, you're not turned into a felon, you're not sent to state prison, and it's specifically designed for victimless crimes, for first offenders, etc. She's the ideal candidate. However, the prosecutor has tremendous discretion, and if they don't want to let you in, the judge is very rare to ever overturn that. And that's what we have happen here. This prosecutor has taken a position that these individuals are not going to get PTI, and the law is so incredibly draconian and harsh that this is where it, it, this injustice, this incredible injustice, because the anti-gunners in New Jersey are so pumped up 
this offense of simple that this offense of simple possession is higher in its penalty, higher or equal to in its penalty to using a firearm illegally. Just having, just having that. And, and, and let me let me just go ahead and point out to people who can't see her picture, and I'm looking at her. She is a beautiful African American woman. So we've got a woman, we've got an African American. She is the single mother of two beautiful young young boys, and they're doing this. To, uh, hold on a second, here, Evan. We want to come back in just a second. I want to sure. talk about why this is important to all of us because let me tell you, all that's happened here is that she crossed a state line. She crossed a state line. She's legal in one place. She steps one foot over the line. And she's looking at major time in prison, branded a felon, probably lose her kids, everything else. That's what the gun control agenda gives us right now. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. Tired of paying for one concealed carry holster after another that's flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? Alien Gear holsters feature a super stealthy and ultra comfortable design. Our professional quality holsters are backed by an ironclad triple guarantee, including a free 30-day test drive, free shell traits for life, and a forever warranty. Starting at just $29.88, you won't find a better quality or better priced holster on the planet. Any planet. Go to aliengearholsters.com to get yours now. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. Hi, I'm Michael Bain. You know I hate cleaning guns. So anything that makes that job faster and easier is definitely a plus. And that's where bore tips come in. These reusable, lint-free cleaning swabs make cleaning a breeze. And the tighter-fitting bore tips do a better job on barrels than cotton mops or patches. Hey, it's a dirty job. Let bore tips help. To find a dealer, visit boretips.com. Inaccurate is just plain worthless. Doesn't matter if you're shooting for a national championship or just trying to beat your friend, you need accurate ammo. Nosler's match grade handgun ammunition delivers. You get Nosler sporting handgun and custom competition bullets in Nosler head stamped brass, loaded to the same strict tolerances as Nosler's match grade rifle ammo. Handgun accuracy through match grade ammo. Available in 9mm, 40, and 45. Visit Nosler.com. Hey everyone, I'm Doug Koenig, winner of more than 60 national and world shooting championships. You know what? I'm here to tell you that the only thing I like better than competitive matches with high-powered pistols and better than hunting big white-tailed deer is watching NRA Freedom Friday presented by Cheaper Than Dirt on the Pursuit Channel. It's true what they say. Pursuit Channel delivers the outdoors. Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. All right, we're talking about this incredible case of this Philadelphia mother. Her name is Shanine Allen. She was pulled over in New Jersey. She had a, a carry permit from Pennsylvania. She thought it was good over there. Just a mistake. She's new to it. Uh, fessed up, just said, hey, I've got the permit, just need to let you know. Boom, she's in prison. She goes to jail. She's been charged with felony. She's facing a minimum of three and a half, maybe as much as 10 years in prison for doing the right thing, for actually telling the officer, hey, I've got a gun. Yeah, I know, I get it, I get it. People say, well, she shouldn't have. I know, 
but you also shouldn't go to prison for years for making a mistake like that. We're talking with Evan Nape. And, and Evan, you are uh, her attorney in this case. Is that correct? I am. I'm representing her, and we're looking forward to that jury trial. You know, for the folks who say she should have known, um, I get that, but that's kind of like blaming a rape victim for being raped. I mean, that's what's happening to her. The law is wrong. Shanine isn't wrong. The law is wrong. Say she shouldn't have known is really rationalizing away what is an, an, an absolutely tyrannical statute that's on the books in New Jersey. And what's going on there in terms of the anti-gunners? They, they are loving the aspect of throwing this single mother in prison, aren't they? Well, you know, uh, there are some that, that are, and they're saying this is to send a message. They think it's a good thing that uh, they can make an example uh, out of her. It's outrageous. They don't care about people. They don't care about what's right. They just, they, all they care about is their obsession with being anti-firearm. That's it. So if she are suffers and her boys suffer, they don't care. Are there some that are looking at this and saying, well, wait, maybe this is wrong and maybe uh, this is draconian? Or is there any talk like that? You know, what's very interesting is uh, actually we're getting a lot of support from non-traditional sources. Uh, you know, the, the if you will, the left, if you will, is actually very much in many different forums and, and media outlets supporting her as well. And, mm. uh, and that's something that's good to see that we're not just you know, preaching to the choir, that it's getting out. And she is really just a great example of why we need national carry reciprocity. She, is this, she stands for that. Is this a situation where New Jersey Governor Chris Christie could have and still maybe could make a little quiet phone call to somebody and say, knock it off? You're, you're, this is out of bounds. You guys are making me look bad. I'm going to run for president. I'm trying to get the votes of the gun owners. Uh, this is going to hurt me. And just make the, well, the look. If you can stop, if you can stop the traffic on a bridge for four days, you can make a phone call. Here's the deal. At this point, the system has failed Shanine, but it's not over. And right. we have a jury trial coming up. If that system still feel, fails her, you know, in terms of the judiciary failing her, then we would turn to the governor to try to get uh, executive action, as we did with Brian Aiken. But it's not unreasonable for the governor to say, you haven't finished with the judicial branch yet, or at least you haven't got past the trial. Right. You know, let it run, and let's see if it, if it works, if the system works. And I believe in my heart the system, when we get 12 normal people up there, they'll do what the judge and the prosecutor aren't willing to do. I, I hear what you're saying, and I know you're not allowed to say it. <laughs> so, I, 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 hear every, I hear every word you're not saying, Evan. Well, we have legitimate defenses, by the way. I mean, there, believe it or not, one of the things stated you'll hear is ignorance of the law is no excuse. But in New Jersey, it is actually a defense. Ignorance or mistake of law is a bona fide statutory defense that's huh. there from the model penal code, and we have raised that defense officially in her case, and we'll be arguing same. So you can be ignorant and make a mistake of law or fact in Jersey, and it can override your conviction. It's an affirmative so, defense as a matter of law. Is she out of jail right now? She's out of jail now, but she did serve uh, over 40 days on this offense before her bail situation got straightened out. And um, she said, and actually she told another media source that she said the only bright side of being in jail is that a prisoner in jail referred her to me. <laughs> I said, boy, that's the only bright thing about being in jail. But No yeah. kidding. Yeah, well, she's lucky what? because you, you literally, and I, I mean literally, wrote the book on gun laws <laughs> in New Jersey. So she, she, she ended up with the right one. What, now, what happened to her, her job and her children? Well, she, got, she lost her job because of this. Of course, you're supposed to be guilty to prove an innocent. But uh, that, they did uh, fire her, even though she's not convicted. Uh, right. And her children you know live with her and she's a great mom and she really takes care of her kids i mean her crime was crossing the benjamin franklin bridge that yeah, was her just, crime just, i mean literally on, on one foot away you're legal take one step one foot mm -hmm. over a line and now you're not legal and you have not performed any particular act or anything it's just where you're standing a, determines where if you're a felon or not or can mm -hmm. be charged with a felony it's it's unconscionable, and we have to we have to get national reciprocity. Absolutely, we have to get national reciprocity. Her case just shows you the problem. You go from one hundred percent law abiding citizen, not in any, and as you say, one foot over, 
And now you're looking at a minimum mandatory three and a half years in state's prison and becoming a convicted felon and losing your civil rights, including your gun rights. It's outrageous to have that distinction simply because you crossed a bridge in America. Now, I know that uh, later on in the show today, we're going to be talking about uh, an effort to try to raise money for her legal defense fund. I am assuming that that's... This kind of things, when you get to this level, this is expensive. It is expensive, and there is, and go get funding. There's the Shanine Allen Legal Defense Fund. Uh, any help and all help is greatly appreciated because we're going to fight this uh, at, at, at every every way, whether we need, you know, we're doing a lot of other motions. If we need to appeal, if we need to try to, uh, you know, move for getting uh, pardon, Expert then there's experts, or there's, there's yeah. just so much involved, and uh, it really is tremendous when folks, and plus, just the showing of the support through the LDF itself, because we have the numbers of people just making small donations, but it shows how many people care. It really makes a difference. Where do, where do people go for that information, you know? It, it, yeah, just just uh, just Google Shanine Allen, S. H A S H A N E E N S H A N yes S H A N E E N Allen Allen and just put uh, you know LDF or Legal Defense Fund or Go Get Funding it'll come up and okay. I guarantee you'll see it and that's easier than trying to the whole link is uh, pretty long yeah. but I don't know that's how okay. they said it but just do that it'll come up for, you'll easily be able to find it right online and take a look at that and you can see. Uh, we've, you know, what's interesting about it. We've actually had people from as far away as Australia making donations and support. This has become not just it's become an international uh, issue. Law enforcement, many comments from troopers and and sheriffs saying they're appalled at this. They they're embarrassed to be in law enforcement. Why would this, you know, on and on. And yet, uh, here in in Atlantic County, New Jersey, uh, the law in New Jersey is set up that if this is how the prosecutor wants to be, he's able to be this way. There it so is. Hey, I, Evan, we're going to have to scoot out of here. I just, I want, I thank you. Would, do me a favor. Keep me posted on this as we go forward, would you, my friend? I will, absolutely. And Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you bet, absolutely. Evan Knappen, if you want to know more about it, actually just go to his website, evannappen.com. And, uh, Evan is the guy. I mean, quite literally wrote the book, and it's N-A-P-P-E-N. Amazing story. Unbelievable story. All right. This week, Jim Brady, James Brady of the Brady Campaign died. Coming up, we'll be talking about what is, in fact, his legacy on gun control. Is it what the media is telling you? Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. Oh, hey, Ben. Before we get to our guest here, I have to tell you, I'm over here cruising the uh, the Brownells website, and I'm looking at, uh, that's Brownells, B-R-O-W-N-E-L-L-S, Brownells website, and they've got a whole bunch of bore guides. If you have a rifle of any type, AR, bolt rifle, whatever, for cleaning your rifle, you need a bore guide. And they run anywhere from like nine bucks up to, I don't know, 35 bucks or so. But I'm amazed at the number of bore guides they have, various ones that are pretty cool. And Brownells gave us a holler this week, and we have a very long association with the Brownells company, with their family, my family. I mean, my dad was friends with, well, Bob Brownell, the, the, the founder of Brownells. So we go way back. So they call us and say, hey, guys, we want to do something with you guys, because it's kind of goes way back, and we've got a special relationship. So they said till the um, end of the month, actually till September 1, Here's the deal. Uh, anything you buy at Brownells, if you use a special code that's available only to Gun Talk listeners, you get 10% off. Simple deal. The code is GRX, Golf Romeo X-Ray. Just check out, put GRX in, check out, you get 10% off of any order. Stunning. Uh, they almost never do this kind of thing. 
So just kind of file that away. If there's something you're thinking about buying, now's the time. You're getting ready for hunting season. Yeah, or whatever. I mean, it says any order. It doesn't say. It doesn't say that you can't use it on ammo. And they've got lots of ammo. Ew. Okay, the code again is GRX at checkout at Brownells. Um, I'm sure you saw the news this week uh, that Jim Brady, James Brady, former uh, White House press secretary, the fellow who got, gentleman who got shot in the head when, uh, during the assassination attempt of President Reagan, he died this week. And joining me to talk about that and kind of explore that legacy, whatever it happens to be, is Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation. Hey, Alan, how are you? I'm fine, Tom. Great to be with you. Okay, uh, James Brady, of course, they uh, named the uh, Brady Bill, the Brady Law after him, but in fact, was it not actually his wife who was the, the powerhouse in terms of pushing that forward? What, what is, when you look back at his life, uh, I have several different thoughts on it I'll share, but I'm just kind of, first thing that comes to mind for you. Well, let me ask some personal experience. So let me start with that, first of all, because I met Jim Brady while he was press secretary at the White House. And in fact, I have a photo of a cabinet office meeting uh, in the cabinet of the White House with President Reagan, myself, and others, and Jim Brady at the table with us that actually hangs in my hall here in my house. And uh, I met him a couple of times, you know, at the White House. And then, of course, the tragic incident happened. And it was really Sarah Brady, you're right, was really the spokesman. And of course, back then, remember, the organization was called the National Council to Control Handguns. It wasn't, the right. Brady name wasn't in it. But, right. but Sarah Brady came on to be chairwoman of the National Council to Control Handguns. And I got to meet her because we were both booked on, uh, right when she became chairman, on a TV show with a live audience in San Francisco. And she got there and realized she was going to have to debate a bit with me on the, on the set. And Pete Shields, who, who is the founder, one of the founders of, of National Council to Control Handguns, was, was there with her as her escort, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And she made him get on the set with her because she was afraid to do it by herself. So it really turned out to be four to one, uh, two guest hosts, two hosts, and, and both of them against me. Uh, and we're on the set. And uh, I referenced to Sarah Brady that her organization supports banning, you know, inexpensive handguns. And she said, oh, no, no, mm-hmm. we're reasonable people. We don't want to ban any guns. I go, no, that's not true. You, you want to ban things called Saturday Night Specials. She turns to Pete Shields on the set and says, well, Pete, is that true? And Pete goes, yes. And then I chastised Sarah for not heading the group that she doesn't even know what their agenda was. Uh, no. That was the last time she'd ever, de- that was the last time she would ever debate me, by the way. And then <laughs> I had another incident a number of years later. Uh, mm-hmm. Julianne, my wife, and I were flying from D.C. to Chicago from a meeting in, in the nation's capital. And we got bumped up to first class, which we usually do as frequent flyers because we have so many miles. And we were sitting in the bulkhead. And all of a sudden, uh, somebody comes on with a wheelchair wheeling Jim Brady onto the plane. And he sits, uh, I'm at the window seat, my wife's at the aisle. And he sits in with the bulkhead at the aisle next to my wife. Mm-hmm. And he didn't recognize me, and he's smiling, and we're talk, you know, talking, and he wants to be friendly, and he introduces himself, we introduce ourselves by name, and we're carrying on about a 10-minute conversation. Just before the plane door is going to close, Sarah Brady comes in, because she was still out smoking her cigarette, and she comes in to sit down next to me, and she goes, oh, G- Sarah, you've got to meet these nice people. And Sarah turns and takes a look at us and says, Jim, we can't talk to them. And he looks at us like, I don't know what's going on, you guys are nice people. And she sits down next to Jim, and then through the rest of the flight, he'd look over and just smile. Hmm. Well, of course, she was a no-show. Yeah, you know, she was a no-show on uh, the radio show one time. Uh, She actually, weirdly enough, I got a call from the Clinton White House. The White House was booking a lobbyist, Sarah Brady, on media shows. And they said, would you like to have her on the show? I said, yeah, sure. And so we got it all set up. And then, of course, she was a no-show because I think uh, in the few days between the time when they called and she would which you scared to appear, she actually figured out what the show was about. But let me ask you this. One of the things I want to point out to people is, of course, Jim Brady was shot in an assassination attempt in Washington, D.C. At the time of the shooting, Washington, D.C. was a total gun-free zone. To me, that has always been the best example of the complete failure of gun control, and all of their efforts from that point forward were based on the failure of gun control. That's really very, very true. And, 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 and likewise, of course, you know, it would always bug me from day one. They never really attacked, uh, John Hinckley for the shooting. They were very silent about John Hinckley, period. They, because that would break the narrative. They don't want to attack the, 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 you know, the attempted murderer. They wanted to attack the gun. Uh, and so they're very silent on, on, on Hinckley all the way through. Even today, now that they're talking about 
prosecuting he could possibly for for murder of Jim Brady mm-hmm. thirty yeah, years that's later. Weird. That's weird. They don't even talk. They don't talk about that because that breaks their narrative. They want not the person who committed the crime. Well, it's, for those who haven't kept up, uh, the medical examiner has now classified the death of Jim Brady some 30-something years later as a homicide, and yet they will not announce what he died from. Yeah, this is going to be very, very interesting, because I, I think at this point the family doesn't want to talk about that. Uh, they, just want to, they just want to push for gun control. You know, the one, the one legacy they do have, and you made the point that, that the White House, was, Clinton booked her on your show. That was really the peak for, for, the, for the Bradys. It was in the White House. The White House threw their muscle and support and put her, and put her out all over the country, so to speak. Uh, since Clinton's been out of the White House, the Bradys and the Brady campaign has, has really floundered a lot. They've raised millions and millions of dollars, but haven't been all that effective. Uh, and but, but the one thing I can – what they've got, the legacy they have is, is they, they victimized the issue. They knew they couldn't win on facts and statistics, but they could go, go and play off emotion. Nobody likes to see anybody shot. Uh, you know, or killed, sure. and so that was a, that was a major attempt at shifting the debate to emotion. Exactly. Hey, Alan, hold on a second. When we come back, uh, we're gonna look at hell, Alan over. I want to tell you about an incredible event you can go to that's in completely free. And if you're into guns or gun rights, or you want to know more about gun rights, this is something you you need to go to. Hey, I'm gonna be there. Why wouldn't you be there? Eight six six Talk Gun. Be right back with more gun talk. At Double Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make, and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. You already know Liberty Safes are great values. Now they're offering an even sweeter deal for Gun Talk listeners. At LibertySafe.com, click on the Fat Boy Safe and type in TOM. Liberty will give you up to $250 off your purchase. Protect the things you value most. LibertySafe.com. Click the Fat Boy Safe. Promo code TOM. Save up to $250. That's LibertySafe.com. LibertySafe.com. You know the name Walther is a legendary brand, but do you know the new Walther? The new Walther has introduced three new precision handguns. The smooth PPQ M2 is a breakthrough in ergonomics and trigger pull. The tough PPX is a workhorse at a value price. The cool, iconic PPK S22 blends classic PPK with the fun of the economical 22 LR. There is a lot going on at the new Walther. Visit us at WalthurArms.com. Walther, at your favorite retail. Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit VanishingParadise.org. That's VanishingParadise.org. Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. In August, you can win with Gun Talk and Top Gun Supply. Grand prize is a Sig Sauer P229 and 40 caliber Smith & Wesson Special. Enter to win now at GunTalk.com slash win. Good luck from Gun Talk and Top Gun Supply. Now, back to Tom. Hi, right, we're talking with Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation. And every year, the Second Amendment Foundation Citizens Committee get together and they work with other groups, but they put together the Gun Rights Policy Conference, which is 
I don't know. What, what We're past 20, 25 years now, Alan. Yeah, I've lost track of the number, but I think yeah. it's well past that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's, it's an annual event where people can go in. It's kind of a gathering of the gun rights community, uh, whether it's state leaders, local leaders, national leaders. You're liable to see anybody from uh, NRA top dogs to Larry Pratt to Alan Gottlieb to state leaders from all the different groups, and they all get together and share information, kind of talk about where we are. And for me, that's the big deal is, okay, what has happened in the year before, where we are at the moment, and what we're looking at as we go forward. To me, that's, that's the big thing I walk away from. Yeah, Tom, and that, of course, has had a very heavy impact on the whole gun rights movement and, and, and gun rights cause for a number of years now. And, you know, what happens in one state that's successful then gets spun out to other states because you learn how to mm-hmm. do it and, and take it to your state. Uh, it, it's been the area where we've been one step ahead of the curve, one step ahead of our opponents because of it. Uh, this year's conference, some of the interesting things, like the people from Georgia Carry, who got the great carry law passed in Georgia so they could virtually carry anywhere, uh, they will be there to talk about how they did it in Georgia. In Colorado, the people that ran the Colorado recall that knocked out a couple of the state senators that voted for, you know, put the gun control laws on the books in Colorado, uh, and they got knocked out. How they ran the recalls, they'll all be there talking about that. So we go from things on, this, on the local level all the way up to the national level. Uh, John Lott will be there with a lot of his new research, talking about a lot of his new research. Uh, John Fun from uh, Wall Street Journal, National Review, Fox News fame will be there speaking. Alan Gore, of course, who is our, our lead uh, attorney on our legal litigation all across the country, will be there along with lots of other Second Amendment attorneys talking about litigation from coast to coast. Uh, it's, it's, it's really going to be a great place. We have two panels on state legislative affairs. We have leaders from, from, from lots of states all across the country speaking. Uh, it's the place to be. Now, this is going to be in Chicago at the Hyatt Regency at the at the airport, actually at O'Hare Airport, September 26, 27, and 28. And the amazing part is it is free to attend. I mean, you got to get there, of course. But other than that, it's free to go there. All the handouts, and we're not talking about some flyers. We're talking about a stack of books you have to struggle to get away from. And they're all free. They're all free, and of course, a lot of the meal functions uh, and receptions are free as well. Uh, you, all you do is have to register at saf.org, samalphafrank.org, uh, or call the Second Amendment Foundation on you know weekdays uh, at 425-454-7012. That's 425-454-7012. Registration is totally free. We're already up to about 400 people, activists already registered for it now. Wow. I expect by the time September comes around, we're going to break eight, 900. It's going to be a rather large event. Uh, and, of course, you know, we're right outside the city limits of Chicago. Where we've won some major lawsuits against Chicago and Illinois. Uh, and we're there to celebrate a little bit and to, to, and to rub Chicago's face in it. Are you going to invite uh, Rahm Emanuel? We invited him the last time we did one in Chicago. There's no chance of him coming. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I, mean, he, I mean, he will pull the Sarah Brady routine and not show up. They only want to speak in front of friendly audiences. They don't want. They don't have the yep. uh, the moxie, so to speak, to to, 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 tell, to try to explain to us why they're right and we're wrong because they know it won't sell. Exactly right. So again, uh, this will be in Chicago, September 26, 27, 28. You can go to saf.org and get all the information there. It's, it's called the Gun Rights Policy Conference and. It's one of those deals, Alan, people say, why do you go? What are you going to get out of it? And I always say this, I don't know what I'm going to get out of it, but I know that if I stay home, I'll get nothing out of it. And I know that every time I go, I come away with so much that I never even imagined. It's always worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, we never know what's going to happen. In fact, a lot of the agenda gets left till like two weeks before because things are always shifting sands for what the issues are going to be in the future. And so we, we sort of leave a lot of the agenda open until, until the last minute because you never know who's going to be there to speak. Uh, in fact, one of our speakers this year is going to be uh, the person who, who uh, for the police, for the state police in Maryland enforced all the gun control laws. He mm-hmm. just recently quit and resigned uh, and, and gave up gave up his whole career, so to speak, because of games that they play in Maryland uh, with law-abiding gun owners, and he's going to come speak about it and what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, can't, that's going can't to be really wait, interesting. Can't, just can't wait to hear it. Alan, listen, I am looking forward to it. Obviously, I'll see you there, and uh, we'll get together and swap some more stories, but I want to invite everybody to be there. And thank you, Alan. Listen, I appreciate you being here, my friend. you got to be there, people. you just got to go. Uh, it's called the Gun Rights Policy Conference. It's in Chicago. That's driving distance for a lot of folks. And the one day's drive for a ton of people. Once you get there, it's like what do they say? Once you get it, you'll get it. You'll understand what I'm talking about. All right, open lines for you. Get in your range reports. 866 talk gun. 866 
Talk Done. Hit Untalk. You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. All right, going straight to the phones. Line four, Jerry is trucking across Utah. Hello, Jerry. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. I just want to say thank you for everything you do. Because of you, my kids have got a couple uh, little Cricket 22s. Cool. Because of you, How... I listen to you guys, and I, lo- I love you guys to death. So, How can I help I you today? About them. Um, I got a, uh, I think it's a 12-gauge bolt-action... Uh, Sears and Roebuck shotgun mm-hmm. that I found years ago when I was doing city cleanup for the county in, in Salt Lake. Okay. And it was just sticking in the trash. It was stuck in the trash. I seen it. I grabbed it. I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. And I I don't remember seeing any actual name brand on it besides Sears and Roebuck. Okay. But it's just the stock in a barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, is it worth cleaning up, fixing up? getting it operational again, or is it something that I should just, um, when my daughters bring their new boyfriends over, sit in the, in the living room, polishing it up, <laughs> making it look good, trying to scare the life out of the uh, new boyfriends to be? Or... I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Jerry, that might be the best use of it. Um, here's the thing. That gun it might be worth 50 bucks if you strained a lot, uh, maybe. It probably is just junk. There's probably a reason somebody threw it out. It may even, you know, who knows? It may even be used in a crime there, getting rid of it. If if it doesn't work, if you've tried it and it doesn't work, and I would be, actually, it would worry me to even try it, um, I probably wouldn't pay any money to get it fixed. By the way, if you haven't shot it, if you don't know anything about a particular gun like that, man, I tell you what, I would I would probably do the old uh, trick of pulling the trigger with a string, put put it inside of a tire or something, and I'd, I'd get away from it before I tried it. But it's not worth much. It's a, an old bolt-action shotgun, and as for the other, no. Uh, might even want to have it deactivated, have a gunsmith do something to it, and then you can uh, use it as a wall hanger, but... It's not much of a gun, honestly, and it's probably not worth your time or effort to put anything into it. At least, it wouldn't be for me. I mean, when you're done with it, what are you going to have? You're still going to have a bolt-action shotgun, and I know there are people who like those. I'm not one of them. (laughs) I just don't get it. Uh, Maybe that's because I never made a left-handed one for for those of us who shoot on the left shoulder. But anyway, Jerry, I, I would not. I would not put any money or effort into that. Um, not sure exactly what to do with it. Maybe you can find somebody to, to give it to. So find somebody you don't like and give it to them. There you go. Uh, Lordy. Uh, Nathan, real quickly on line three. Uh, what's this? Uh, you got a bullet blocker backpack. Bulletproofing padding in the backpack. What's the deal? Did you get one of those? Yes. Got one last year for my daughter. Uh, yeah. Saw it after it in our local gun store. It's back to, back to school time, so I figured I'd throw it out there for all the other parents. Uh, of course, the backpacks that they had at the gun store were suitable for my daughter, so we went online and put the insert, put in her mm-hmm. backpack, told her to hold her backpack up between her and whoever it might be if anything ever went bad. How old is your daughter? Uh, she is 10. I have, I have a few thoughts about that, but I'm not sure, honestly. I just I don't know I don't know how I feel exactly about that uh, Nathan I'm ten year old you know are we frightening them to death are we are we actually training them are we giving them something useful uh, if it were me I was thinking if I were going to teach somebody how to use it I would tell them to put it on put the straps on um, f- on the front yeah good point a lot a lot of schools now don't even allow them to have their backpacks during the day I don't know I. Man, I'd put my effort into, let's talk to the school and get them to get to where the administrators and the teachers can carry. In Ohio, they've, they've done that in a lot of places. Why not Kentucky? Now, there's a worthwhile activity. Would you get involved and help your local schools get involved so that they could carry, so they could get training, so that the teachers could actually protect 
the students in a way other than throwing their bodies in front of the bullets? Seems worthwhile to me. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.